All right, real talk. This design right here, it's looking kind of lifeless, flat, just meh. But check this out. See the difference? Instantly more depth, more personality, and way more realistic. And the secret sauce? Textures. Today, I'm showing you how to use textures to add depth and realism to your designs. We'll go over picking the right textures, blending them like a pro, using displacement maps, masking for precision, and finally, some bonus tips to take your designs from good to great. So if your designs ever feel a little flat, stick around, let's fix that. So why even use textures? Well, here's the deal. Textures create depth. They make designs feel more real, more tactile, less like they were made in a sterile digital void. Think about it. Vintage posters, textured. Movie posters, textured. Even slick modern branding, subtle textures everywhere. Look around you, everything has texture. Your coffee cup, your clothes, even the screen that you're watching on. Adding textures to your designs tricks the eye into thinking it's something real. All right, so let's talk about choosing textures. Not every texture works for every project. And contrary to popular belief, throwing a random grunge on everything is not the move. So how do you pick the right one? Here's a quick breakdown. Grunge and distressed textures, perfect for vintage punk or urban designs. Paper and fabric textures, great for print style looks, branding and typography. Noise and grain, subtle, clean and modern, makes things feel organic. Metal and concrete, adds an industrial or futuristic vibe. And organic textures, wood, marble, watercolor. They're amazing for packaging or branding design with natural aesthetics. See, this one fits this style, but this one, not so much. Picking the right texture is like picking the right font. It has to match the vibe. All right, let's go on to the fun part and actually apply some textures. For this, we're gonna be using some textures from my latest asset pack, Surface Supply. This pack has a bunch of 4K textures and I gotta say, it's a lifesaver. Whenever I need to add textures to my work, I've got a bunch of them. If you wanna grab this pack for yourself, then there's a link in the description. There's also a free sample version if you wanna try before you buy. So yeah, go check it out. Okay, so we're gonna start with this texture. Just resize that. So you can just lower the opacity and sure, you know, you got a bit of texture on there, but we can do a lot better than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to blend modes. Now, this is where the magic happens. For light textures, multiply works great. Linear burn works pretty well too, but you know, slightly heavier contrast. So I think for this, we're going to use multiply. And we're just going to lower the opacity a bit on this. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, cool. Right, let's add another texture. This guy think this was a like leather sort of leather hardback look but it's got some really nice really nice grunge scratches and stuff on it okay for darker textures the best blend mode to use is screen and you know what that's actually just works sometimes you need to lower the opacity on this but uh yeah i think that that's fine i'm just gonna leave that as is yeah nice you can see how it's kind of coming through on the hair here blending it all in together okay and we'll add one more texture Let's get a nice subtle grain across the whole thing and again we're going to do screen for this one okay so this needs the opacity turning down a little bit because it's it's too much as is so we'll bring that down to maybe 70 yeah cool i like that you know what i'm actually going to change this lighter texture i think i'm going to change this to linear burn yeah because i like i like this high contrast here Another cool thing you can do, which I'm going to show you quickly, is you can actually just apply textures directly to the layer uh, using the filter gallery. You go texture and then texturizer. So there's a few default ones that are just here already, which you can see they're kind of the sandstone one I quite like. Just gives it a sort of sandstone effect across the whole of it. But another thing you can do is actually load your own textures, which I will show you how to do now. So to do this, what we can do is we can just double click on one of our textures and then we're simply going to save this so we'll just save that in here as a psd and now we're going to go back to our work and we'll go back to filter filter gallery now we just click on this icon here click load texture and we choose the psd that we just saved now you can see it's almost like added a 3d version of that texture 
to the image. So yeah, it's a, it's a another really cool way to add textures as opposed to just overlaying them. But um, I think for this one, we're just gonna just gonna stick with what we've got. Right. So we've got the textures on, but it's still looking a bit too digital. You can see these lines; they're a bit too clean. They're not really merging with the textures that well. So the answer to that is displacement maps. With these, we can actually use textures to warp graphics realistically onto our design. So for this, we're just going to do a similar thing to what we did with the texturizer and open one of our texture layers. And then for this, we're going to add a black and white adjustment layer because displacements only work in black and white. And then we're going to add brightness and contrast. Um, we'll just lower the brightness here a bit and then whack the contrast all the way up. And then I'm going to duplicate this, bring the brightness back a bit and then duplicate this again, duplicate again with Control J. And that is kind of how you want it to look. You want a lot of contrast between the light parts and the dark parts of the texture. So then we'll just save this as a PSD. We'll just add displacement to the end of it. Save that. Right, and then go back into our original file. Then we'll choose our artwork layer and we will go filter, distort, displace. So the higher you set this, the more it's going to displace it. So I find that actually less is more with this. So we're just going to go two, and we're going to choose our displacement PSD. And we'll just zoom in a bit here. And as you can see, the text has now got a subtle displacement to it, which matches the texture. So it looks much more like it's been printed. You could obviously up the displacement on this if you wanted to we'll go five and five and see what that looks like just as an example. So as you can see, this is much more displaced uh, you know if that's the look you're going for then by all means do that uh, i think for this poster it's a bit much so i'm just going to undo that and we're going to have it as is so yeah displacements are a great trick for making text and logos or even entire images feel more integrated into the background instead of just sitting there flat now sometimes you don't want texture everywhere for example this little bit here i kind of want to remove that and this bit up here i'm not a huge fan so for that, what we can do is masking. So we just select the layer that we want to mask and then we go layer, layer mask, reveal all. And now with the mask selected, we use the brush tool and you can either do black, black, which will erase, white will reveal. So if you want to kind of do something in between, you can kind of do a middle gray color. I'm going to do slightly darker gray and then we'll get the brush tool, make my brush a bit smaller. Use a soft brush and then we can just click there, lower that down and just click up here, get rid of that. And then this white bit is a little bit out of place. So I'm just going to lower that. And yeah, that's masking. Now, one last thing to just make your design look that bit better is color grading and adding some final touches. So I want there to be a bit more contrast in this design. So I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer and I'm going to just lower the darks down a little bit and I'm going to raise the highlights up a tiny little bit. Cool. So you can see before, after, just a bit more punchy. Okay, another thing we can do is add a color balance adjustment layer, which is very fun. I enjoy doing this. You can kind of get a film effect doing this with just a few little changes. So for the shadows, um, I'm going to add a little bit of green, which brings the darks into a sort of like green overlay and a bit of cyan as well to get it a little bit more towards a turquoisey color and then a tiny bit of blue. Okay, cool. And then we'll go to the midtones and we're just going to add a bit of green here in the midtones and then we'll go to highlights and we're actually just going to add a bit of blue to these highlights because that's going to make all the whites back to their sort of clean white color. Plenty more you can do with color grading, gradient maps, LUTs, a whole lot of stuff, but I'm just going to do that for this video. I'll leave that for another video. Textures seriously elevate the quality of your design, and once you start using them, you won't go back. If you want to try out some of the textures I use in this video, then as I said, the link is in the description. All right, that's it for today. Let me know in the comments your favorite way to use textures. And if this helped, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.